I'd like to thank you for joining us today for the Medicaid Home and Community-Based Community Support Waiver Overview. Uh, my name is Heike Johns, Learning and Development Coordinator for the Division of Developmental Disabilities, and will be your host for today's webinar. A couple of housing items we'd like to take care of. If you have questions regarding anything technical, such as sound, um, the clarity, if you'll drop those questions in the chat box, I will address those as best as possible. Um, if you have questions regarding the content, we ask that you put those in the Q&A box. Questions will not be fielded today during the webinar. However, um, any questions that we do receive will be addressed. They will be put into an FAQ document, or if it's something that is um, very specific to an individual situation, uh, we will answer those via email. So with that, I am going to turn this over to our day, today's presenter, Corey McMahon with the Federal Programs Unit. Uh, thank you, Heike, and, and good morning, everyone. I'm glad that you could join us for this fourth webinar of the Federal Programs Unit webinar uh, for webinar series. This a webinar will provide a more detailed overview of the community support way that includes the purpose of the waiver, services it provides, and how the waivers are similar and yet different. Just a reminder, in July 2018, Andrew Brenner, the Director of Federal Programs, presented the Home and Community-Based Waivers 101. Summers with federal programs presented the Comprehensive Waiver Webinar in October 2018, and Leslie Bradley presented the Missouri Children with Developmental Disabilities Waiver Webinar in January 2019. What is an home and community-based or otherwise known as HCBS? HCBS with community services to participants who otherwise were placed in an institution, nursing home, or hospital to receive long-term care immunity. Basically, HCS is about participants having the most integrated lifestyle as possible, just like you and me. Med funding for the HCBS waivers in Missouri consists of matching approximately 36% of state general revenue dollars with approximately 64% of federal dollars. This determines for each of the waivers the targeted population, the number of participants served, what is are covered, and how much it will spend on, on uh, services in each waiver. In 91, a new section was added to the Social Security Act which authorizes state Medicaid agencies to apply for HCBS waivers. Participants had to live in institutions in order to receive Medicaid. They take the dollars into the community. In T, Missouri implemented its community support HCBS waiver. The target population was for people with developmental disabilities. Currently, the division has capacity to serve over 3,900 participants in this waiver. Last community support waiver application was approved by Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services FI1 2016. 
the next renewal will be in 2021. The renewal process starts over a year in advance. This slide quick, what you need to know about the Community Support Waiver. This waiver serves over 3,900 participants and has an individual cost cap of $28,000. It is an exceptions process to exceed the individual cost cap. Support provides all warehouses except uh, residential, safe care support, and dental. Residents whose needs can be met in the community and whose annual service cost is anticipated to be less than $28,000 may be eligible for the community support waiver. It is designed to provide waiver services to participants living in their community in the most integrated setting. More information about state plans services. For those and items that are medically necessary, health net state plan services must first be utilized before water services are, are authorized. MoHealthNet for MoHealthNet to approve funding, it must be a med necessity. So it should be determined if the need is for safety, convenience, or medical necessity. The division is working in collaboration with MoHealthNet to create a document explaining what will and will not be covered by MoHealthNet. And state plan services include non-emergency medical transportation, medical equipment, and then we have a few more listed for you there. And it's available in the community support waiver include 25 services to meet the needs and flexibility participants supported in this waiver. The support waiver provides all services provided in the comprehensive waiver except for ex, except for for uh, dental which is uh, Heard in state plan, um, as well as uh, um, or, or, uh, as well as uh, residential, and, and uh, dental is, is is actually covered in the uh, partnership for hope waiver. Uh, Partners may qualify for both the department of um, health and Senior Services, DHSS, and Department of Mental Health, DMH, waivers. However, a participant can only receive services in one waiver at a time. Therefore, the support coordinator should work with DHSS to ensure the participant isn't in two waivers at the same time. A cannot consumer direct state plan and self direct DD services at the same time. 
applications may not be furnished to adapt living arrangements that are owned or leased by providers of waiver services. Things would be considered provider owned and controlled. Citizen must have an ongoing waiver service. Uh, is documented in their uh, individualized support plan. If need for services is less than monthly, the participant requires regular monthly monitoring, which must be documented in the ISP. MoHackard reviews are mandatory for all waivers. CMS requires the Medicaid agency, which is MoHealthNet, to provide oversight to the division with the operating agency. MoHealth requests a statistically valid sample of waiver records to review for compliance and to verify if the division is meeting the required expectations. My reviews include the level of care determinations, uh, the individual support plans, the Medicaid waiver provider services choice statements, the used to determine the level of care Care, see more service authorizations, and the monthly and or quarterly reviews for the fiscal year requested. CMS requires the division to report quarterly and annually to MoHealthNet. These type assurances address important dimensions of water quality, including assuring that service plans are aligned to meet the needs of waiver participants and there are effective systems in place to monitor participant health and welfare. For insurance regarding provider qualifications, e-licensure, a certification or an accreditation organization ensures compliance. Here are a few important and helpful links, uh, helpful resource links. The Unity Support Waiver Application, the current approved DD waiver manual, the programs unit, and the ACBS transition plan. And we thank you for your time, and we hope that this webinar was helpful.